Excuse me. Does anyone know where I could find some empty tubes? <laughs> Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hot or Rat where you can have it my way. And today we'll be reviewing episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star season seven. Today our queens were challenged to act in the campy holiday horror film, Santa's School for Girls. <laughs> and the runway category was Nitty Nitty Bang Bang. Bang Bang. So we'll be going queen by queen to break all of that down, as well as taking a look at a video that's been circulating the internet that features Raja calling out Violet and Gottmik. <gasps> But before we get started, I just want to look around at where we're at here on the Bussy Queen channel and acknowledge that we are about to hit 200,000 subscribers. And I just can't express how much it means to me as an independent creator to reach this level of audience on this platform. I truly feel so blessed when I wake up every single day. So thank you from the absolute bottom of my rotted heart. <laughs> And of course, I have to give an extra special thank you to every one of my patrons. My patrons are the reason I can be a creator full time. And if you're interested in joining my patron family, you can get exclusive member benefits like your Patreon icon featured in my videos when you vote on your hottest hot, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and the Bussy Queen Collector tier even gets physical benefits like signed Polaroids and postcards sent directly to them every single month. So one last time, thank you to everyone who has made my channel a success, both big and small and cheer to a million? Okay, we'll, we'll stay humble. 300,000, we'll start there. And then the world! Now let's open up these tombs. First up, the Vivian. On the runway, the first thing I thought was like gorgeous Candyland marshmallow field dreams. The thick cable knit ball gown is 100% to the brief, done with style, polish, glamour, and elegance to the maximum. The other thing that I love about the Vivian is she's not afraid to have fun with it and add campy elements to her looks. For example, today we've got these beautiful little knitting. What are they called? Knitting? Knitting? What? I've never had to say that word out loud. Needle, yeah, knitting needles. Okay, knitting needles in her hair, which beautifully complements this gown. This look is hot. Also, girl, she said this was 100% wool. <gasps> I get overheated behind this camera wearing nothing but a crop top and basketball shorts. I can only imagine how she feels. <laughs> And in our family-friendly holiday loose parody of Mean Girls, the Vivian played headmistress Nutmegan or Nutmeg if you're nasty. And girl, I'm feeling nasty. She approached this with the Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford in Mommy Dearest Mindset, which I think was a really smart character choice because RuPaul loves Joan Crawford. Girl, play to the judges. She's smart. No more wire hangers. Thank you. Every time she was on camera, she was stealing focus. She was acting at a level that I'm not sure anyone else besides Jinx even was aware of in the room. And my only small critique for Viv in this role was there were a few moments where she slipped into that comfortable for her Trump character. Granted, it seemed like the writing did kind of want her to go that way with the let's make Christmas great again reference. But I think this role still would have shined even without the element of orange tinting that one scene. This performance was hot. Next up, Slay Coulee. On the runway today, this is what she wrote about her look on Instagram. This is by far one of my favorite runways. When we got the theme, I went on a deep dive researching anything that spoke to me. That's when I came across the incredibly beautiful style of the Indabelli people of South Africa. Known for their brightly painted homes, they decorate the exteriors with vibrant symbols and expressions that portray communications of personal prayers, self-identification, values, emotions, and marriage. One of my favorite compliments that didn't make the final cut was Ross Matt Matthews saying he felt like this look belonged in the Smithsonian. The thing I love about this look most is that it has both cultural and historical significance mixed into a modern drag interpretation. And I think it's cool that she did this in her own color palette. And there's a whimsicality to the knitted neck rings and leg warmers that she's wearing. I just had a lot of fun with this look. That said, if I were looking for areas of improvement on this runway, I would say the shoes were probably not the right choice for this look, given the original reference and bright color palette of the rest of the look. I also would have looked for a way to elevate the blue plastic bowl that is attached to her head. Given the runway category, I think this would have been a great opportunity to include some sort of knit covering around that that matched the knitted dress she was wearing. But all things considered, this is a great look and Shay should be proud of it. This look is and I'm not sure if this was just a happy accident or part of the plan the whole time. But I have to point out, Shay referenced the Indibelly people on the same episode they did an acting challenge parodying Mean Girls. Or need I remind you, in one of the most famous scenes of the movie, Katie's mom asks her, this is the fertility boss of the Indibelly people, doesn't that mean anything to you? And Katie, in her rebellious phase, just says, 
No, but it probably all just was a coincidence. Shay plays the role of Noelle, who basically would be the Katie Heron, the new girl to the school, who is kind of wandering around with doe eyes like, oh, y'all do that here? Oh, you worship Santa here? But really though, her role here is to serve as a sanity litmus check against everyone else's crazy characters as they overact and give extreme exaggerations of themselves. Overall, I think Shay did a fine job in the challenge, but I don't think she transformed the role in the way that so many of her peers did tonight. Like I found myself really wanting her to push the envelope in some of the scenes where she just did what was basically a good job. So I'm gonna leave this one at a warming up. Next up, welcome to the odd side of the world. It's Evie. On the runway, girl, girl, girl. She gave us immaculate drag on the runway tonight. This type of look is the reason I love Evie Oddly. It's reminiscent of those crazy things she did in her original season, like with the jellyfish look. Her artistic prowess is shining through here. She made this whole thing, dip dyed it, made the matching hair, and that headpiece to die for. This is so creative, so boundary pushing and different. And it goes without saying, this look is hot. And I would make a joke about how she probably shouldn't wear this look around any cats because they'd tear it up, but she's already serving so much Oh. <laughs> See, I'm funny sometimes. In the challenge, she is playing the role of Mary with an E. This character would basically be the Regina George of the group of girls. And what I liked most about what Evie did was that this was different from what she has been giving us so far in the competition. This was Evie being the queen bee, the popular girl who gets what she wants, but also she found ways to integrate some of her weird little mannerisms into pieces of the role. And that I think is what really made this Regina special. And for that reason, I'm gonna give her performance in this a Next up, <coughs> it's Jinx Monsoon. <laughs> wow, I just realized how hard it is <coughs> to do vocal fry in a loud tone. But we'll get to that in a second. First, on the runway, she is giving us reference to Marlena Dietrich, who was famously played by Sasha Valor in Snatch Game. We know she's gonna give us some old Hollywood glamour. We know she's gonna ham it up on the runway and all of that. But this reference that she is giving is a near direct copy of Marlena Dietrich's outfit and no less found a way to do this type of look on a knitted runway with this like knitted fishnet oversized esque glamorous gown. And I just wanna celebrate how beautiful, glamorous and old school opulent Jinx looks here. So was I surprised? No, but I did have a yarn fall with this look and I think it's in the challenge, she plays the role of Holly. The role was basically written as an airheaded shopaholic, but Jinx was, quote, admittedly not happy with her role. And so she completely subverts everything about this play and probably what this character should have been according to the writers and just does her own thing. And for that, I commend her. And I think what really sold me on this character was the devil possession moment. And when she like snapped in the middle of the art room, there is, I think literally no one else in the drag waste Drag race, drag race for babies. Drag race queendom that could have taken such a small role and done so much with it. Like she did so much with it, which in some cases was kind of bad because you don't notice literally anyone else on the stage. And it's not something you would probably want to do if you were actually acting in a film or on stage. But given this is a competition, it's exactly what you want to do. Jinx wants to win. And I think she proves it every single week. But as Oscar worthy as this performance might have been, she didn't secure the win. We'll talk about why I think that is later, but for now, I'm gonna give this performance a <laughs> Next up, Trinity the trained actress, Tuck. On the runway, when I think of knitwear and a drag queen doing knitwear, this is really exactly where my brain goes. But what I think none of us could have expected <laughs> was that she would have this undergarment with leopard print and leopard print spray painted into her wig. That was a gag. She's carrying what she calls a grumpkin down the runway that a fan apparently made for her. And I love how fashionable that she has made knitwear feel. But if she were looking for that top runway position, the leopard print part of the garment maybe could have also been knitted. And I still don't know what a Grumpkin is, but this look is hot. Girl, is a Grumpkin related to a Blumpkin? Don't Google that. Don't Google that. In Santa's school for girls, she plays the character of Joy, who basically would have been the dumb blonde stereotype, Karen from Mean Girls. And this is where I have to highlight Janixa, the guest judge's presence in the directing room. She was giving advice to the queens that was actually helpful. So often, I feel like Michelle or Ross, as good a job they do, as okay a job they do, <laughs> 
they're not directors. Janixa is actually a movie director and I was vibing with the flow of her energy and critiques. For example, she told Trinity to take pleasure in her absence, which completely changed the direction of Trinity's character and landed Trinity in like the top three for me tonight. She was so delightfully dumb and completely both nailed and transformed this character into something way smarter than it was originally written as. This performance was hot. Next up, it's one of the baddest bees in kindergarten, Monet Exchange. On the runway, she is giving us knitwear meets streetwear. And I absolutely adore the multi-tone yarn that was used with the way the different colors intermix and are woven together to create a little houndstooth pattern on like the jacket. Phenomenal detailing there. I love the bow in her hair, the high-waistedness of the shorts, and she just looks so cute. My one critique on this look is the shoes. They do feel a little bit like an afterthought. She kind of just glued some puff balls to some ankle booties. This look though is still hot. Also, conspiracy theory, I'm full of them tonight. Maybe her promo with the puffy jacket was actually a reference to this runway because she thought she was robbed of winning this challenge. <gasps> Anyways, in the challenge, she played the role of Miss Toe. First name, Camel. And girl, the exchange rate just went up. The hair, love to see it. And this role was won by Monet through the strategic alliance that she has with Trinity. They did the little auditions on the couch, but... <laughs> Trinity still gave the role to Monet. I love that she is honoring that alliance though, I've got to say. And even though the couch auditions and rehearsals were a little flat, I think she really turned it out in the final performance. She gave us a character that was to me reminiscent of Professor Trelawney from Harry Potter meets that 70s show. And she shared what was, I think, the best scene of the entire parody movie they made when the Vivian is trying to slay her and they just are taking turns air dodging, air dodging, air dodging, and then gets her. Oh, you didn't get her. She's still alive. And then finally she does get her. Huh! <laughs> I'm acting. As great as that scene was though, I think she had trouble securing the win because in her other big scene, which featured pretty much every other queen, they were kind of taking turns showboating and doing new and different things while her character was just one note there. This performance was like totally hot though. Next up, Pillow Fight. It's Jada. On the runway, she's giving us a direct reference to Big Comfy Couch, a kid's show from many moons ago. Only millennials will remember. And I think this look shows off my favorite thing about Jada, her attention to detail. The look is immaculate. Head to toe, the Afro hair puffs, the headband, the little cutouts in her yarn onesie, and the way that those cutouts and pieces are creating different shapes and colors throughout the look keep it very visually interesting. Plus, I thought it was so nice and sisterly of the Vivian to just lend her her entire gown to use as a shawl to perfectly complement this look. Jada, is there room for one more on that couch? This look is hot. In the challenge, Jada asks for some of the smaller roles and ends up with Hannah, the nerd character. She really nailed it for me with the mannerisms, like when she would just stand off to the side. <laughs> I can't even do it, but when she would stand off to the side looking like the humpback of Notre Dame, the method acting, we love to see it. Plus this role was, I feel very different from what we've seen from Jada in previous acting challenges. So I applaud her stepping out and turning a new leaf. That said, she could have gone bigger and bigger is not always better, but when you're in a room with the Vivian Trinity Jinx girl, the challenge becomes not just can you act well, but can you overact their overacting. This performance though definitely deserves a passing grade. It was Next up, why are you gagging? So she's carrying a gold medal chain ball. It's Raja. Girl, get out of here. Get out of here with this look. She's giving us intergalactic Barbarella space queen, but really done in such a fresh way. She's giving us hard armor lines with those boots, perfectly contrasting the knitwear gold chain mail that she has draped across her body. And she has perfectly accessorized this with those beautiful gold cuffs on one arm, the face mask. Girl, this is a look. This is a look. She is turning a look. I actually think the runways this episode were maybe some of the best of the entire season so far. The looks were solid across the board from all the girls, but Raja found a way to put that cherry on top. Put my cherry on top, baby. Raja, thank you for gracing us with your presence today. This look was hot. In the challenge, she plays the character of Scrooge, which is short for Lisa. Of course. And she says her acting inspirations in her approach to this character are Nancy from The Craft and Lydia from Beetlejuice. But did she act well or did she act a fool, girl? The thing is, her character was written to be a scene stealer. People always connect to the outcast in choosing this role in a movie like this where so many of the other characters are uniform and not only uniform, but wearing uniforms was so smart. Because as interesting as some of the other roles were, they did kind of blend together. I close my eyes and I think of Raja giving her voice boyfriend or frosty 
<laughs> and revealing the pumpkin in her dorm bed. And the thing is, I don't think Raja's raw acting skill was the best in this cast, but I think her performance in the role was the most memorable and one that I had some of the most fun with. And I think she found really interesting ways to blend in her cool mom energy into this alternative character. Scrooge was not one cent short this Christmas. This performance was <laughs> And we'll get to the drama with Raja here in a second, but I just wanna say, I think this acting challenges was one of the better that we've seen recently. Lots of girls tried different things. They had an amazing guest judge come in and help direct. And the writing wasn't hell bent on constantly referencing quotes from older seasons of Drag Race. Plus I think the new things they tried with this worked well, like adding in those confessional moments where the Queens broke the fourth wall and where Jinx literally chased down the cameraman like a demon. <laughs> And sure, maybe it was a little reductive to parody Mean Girls, but then again, it is my favorite movie and a cornerstone of gay culture, so I was happy to see it. And overall, this was yet another episode where the judges had a near impossible time, I think, picking a top two. The Vivian, an obvious choice. She was the lead role and absolutely slayed. The house down boots, yes, God. I think the second win, though, could have been given to Raja, Jinx, Monet, or even Trinity, who all had excellent moments in this parody. They were also totally like, fetch. That's what the kids are saying, right? That caught on? Imagine the alternate universe that exists parallel to ours where fetch became a popular term. Wow. I wonder what would have been different. But our second win does go to Raja. And again, I think that made total sense because her character and performance was so memorable and different from everyone else's. Raja and Viv each gain another legendary legend star and lip sync. And I did react to this lip sync over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, access to exclusive videos and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of my video. See you there. But dare I say it, I think this was one of the best lip syncs we've had so far. I love the juxtaposition of the Vivian's absolute desperation to win this lip sync with licking Raj's armpit, doing a solo wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> and literally throwing the kitchen sink at the lip sync next to Raj's cool, calm, and collected energy. <laughs> she was like, I'm not playing that game. I'm not getting that messy. And that is like why I think she definitely deserved the win there. And we end the episode with Jada getting blocked, but with three stars. And with everyone else but Monet and Shay having two stars. They each have one. And as promised, here's the video of Raja that's been circulating the interwebs where she calls out Gottmik and Violet. And unless you've been hiding under a rock lately, you'll remember that Violet got into a little bit of hot water when she booted Raja's first two runways. I can't wait to see what she says about this one. But it is also very clear to me, at least, that she is being a little shady, a little catty. She's having a little fun with her drag sisters, and I don't read this clip as having any animosity or true negativity wrapped up in it. Never forget, all press is good press. Press, 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 press. And as for my hottest hot this week, I'm gonna give it to Raja on the runway and the Vivian in the challenge. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots, and this week they've chosen as I have. It's crazy. As always, I wanna say thanks to you for watching today's video and give an extra special shout out to Fonzi, who's just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Adrian Perwinkle, Aiden the Individual, Alessandro420, Alicia, Angel, Cyrus, Dark Sided Otter, David Webb, Dickie, Felicia, Frankie, Hector, JB, Jeffrey, Joseph, Josh, Kyle Hermes, Laura, The Set, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxila, Wow, Michelle, Your Bell, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Wheelie, and Will and Tom, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.